Although it is worth noting, nowadays you do not take the prizes, so you'll see them shown as red on Daichi's side there. Six prizes will still be put out, but now Daichi only needs to take four prizes to win. Daichi also gets to begin the game going first, has a quick ball, will get rid of his Galarian Moltres V, not used so much mm. in this matchup. And we'll see Daichi start looking through his prize cards, got to scout these basic energy. He only plays two copies of each of the types of his basic energy, two lightning, two darkness, two <laughs> fighting, still has the space for two capture energy <laughs> and uh, plays a high count of the double turbos. Those are going to be important to follow as we do see the capture energy turn one alongside an Arceus V. It's a very strong start here. You could easily see an EV coming down to threaten Otavio's um, engine from as early as possible. I think it's a big reason why we are seeing capture energy in Daichi's list because on the following turn, you can try and get a Pikachu V established and powered up. So EV is going to come onto the bench with the capture energy, and it's already looking like a very strong turn for Daichi. Yeah, you don't want to start with a Crobat. The Crobat's not a good starter. You really want to be playing that in the mid to late game, you know, or even in the early game, just to, to draw until you've got six cards in your hand. Now it's taken up a bench space, and it hasn't even had the decency to draw you any cards <laughs> first. But... Uh, You've got your Arceus, you've got your energy, you've got your Eevee, and actually, you know what? You don't need much more than that turn one. Let's see how Otavio's hand looks. Does have a capacious bucket and already a lot of water energy in hand. Did spy a quick ball and maybe a couple other pieces here and there, so he should have a good turn of things. Of course, getting lots of your basics is usually important for this deck, not only for your engine and for using Shady Dealings as much as possible, but also for your damage output with the subspace swells. So certainly we'll see Otavio trying to go as wide as possible on the board. He is playing the heavy four battle VIP pass to try and help him get there as well. Otavio taking the time to look through his prize cards, make sure he's fully aware of what's going on. I think when you're in a rough matchup and you're down two prize cards already, essentially, it's, um, it's gonna be a rough game for him to say the least but he could still use this as a, as a reconnaissance miss a mission and try and find some avenues of play to come up against this difficult matchup. Yeah, it's not ideal. I mean, the good news is there's no worries about going wide here in the Palkia mirror. You've got to think about how much damage your opponent can do based on the size of your bench. The good news is here it's not such an issue. We do have a quick ball which can come out here, so we've got another basic. I think I saw a basic Pokemon in hand there as well. Yeah. So we're at least going to be getting a few things going here. Obviously, getting a Raiding Greninja is going to be big for draw power. And, I mean, you kind of got to go with your Palkia here because it's the only way you're going to really do, you know, enough damage to start KOing those big Pokemon. With this many water energy in hand, Otavio is going to opt to go for a Raiding Greninja early on and conceal some cards and get a couple additional always helpful, especially when you have those VIP pass. They have such diminishing returns if you don't see them turn one, that you want to maximize their usage as quickly as possible. Otavio, <laughs> being a lefty, is going <laughs> to throw his deck this side, even though we've mapped out the, the deck on the other one for him. You've got to be comfortable here when you're on stream, because uh, this is a high pressure situation. You want everything to be as normal as possible. I think he did pick up a VIP pass there. That is huge. Oh, that is very, very huge. So that's going to get another couple of basics. And this is good. You know, you've got two Sobble and you've got your Radiant Greninja. Here you could go for a couple of Palkia, or you could even go for a third Sobble if you were thinking that. Uh, Otavio very much is not thinking that, though. <laughs> it is all about the double Palkia. Because as we've seen, you do not want your only two prize attack, your only big attacker to be KO'd nice and early. And really, for Otavio, it is a fast start we're looking for. If Daichi actually gets set up, this is going to be a very, very rough game. But if you can get enough things going to stop that setup, stop the Jolteon coming out, stop the Pikachu VMAX coming out of all the energy, we're going to see a very different game. I think it definitely makes sense to go for the double Origin Form Palkia V here, because you are very aware that Daichi's already got the EV into play. There's a genuine real possibility that Daichi does establish the turn two Thunderous Awakening, so you need to establish your Palkias as much as possible. You know that your uh, Inteleon pieces are far less powerful, so you want to just physically have the outs as quickly as possible, so you can just irid us throughout the game, even without the help of Shady Dealing. It's yeah. a capacious bucket here, certainly a turn attachment will be important for Otavio as well.
Yeah, this is one of those games where you need to get your energy on, you need to get your attackers rolling. I mean, the ideal situation here is a turn two KO on that Eevee or maybe even KOing an Arceus. I mean, Daichi still does need a pivot here. He needs to go away to get that Crobat out of the active. And the turn attachment is really going to have to go on to that Arceus V-Star here. Of course, we know at this stage that we do have Star Birth, that V-Star power ability. that lets you search for any two cards in your deck. So, unfortunately, you know, getting things like a switch are just not going to be difficult. And, oh, look, it's Flying Pikachu. It's a really good start from Daichi. He's immediately evolved into his Arceus V-Star. Goes ahead and grabs the Flying Pikachu by a quick ball. Can bench this, then go for a Mani play and disrupt Otavio's early um, use of concealed cards here. Just one for Daichi. Known to shuffle. We'll put it to the bottom. Get himself five cards. Just four for Otavio. Five. And Daichi is certainly looking for double turbo energy. He's looking for a switch out. He's looking for memory capsule or Jolteon. If he finds a couple of those pieces, he can starve for the rest. I do see Ultra Ball and the memory capsule. So he's done pretty well here. We discard a couple basic energy by the looks of things. Going to quickly eye up what he wants to do and how he wants to star birth. Could potentially use the little mini on before establishing his own <laughs> ability lock or just throw it away into the discard pile. We will see now V Star Birth from Arceus V Star searching the deck for any two cards you like. And I think this spells danger. It's going to be switch double turbo energy. Has to be switch double turbo energy. Yeah. That's how you get the attack going. And I mean, ideally, now we get the Jolteon as well. We do see the minion coming down. And I like this. I mean, Daichi's basically on. look, I've got the attack. I've yeah. got the KO. Now let's push it. He's got everything now. He can discard two basic energy. It means that he will go down to a hand of literally just the Professor's Research for next turn. So he's set himself up well and completely disrupting Octavio with not only the Mani, but also the Thunderous Awakening from Jolteon alongside a Memory Capsule. He's also going to initiate that prize race, meaning that he only needs three remaining to win the game here. Yeah, this is going to be absolutely huge. We like this. So we do see the switch. And of course, like you say, only three remaining because we got that double prize loss. So this is, I mean, this, um, oh, we got the so memory. Horrible. Oh, that's uh, literally everything. It's so horrible. <laughs> Daichi is just mean-spirited <laughs> at this point. He really has come here to punish the Palkia V-Star players. And uh, he's doing just that. That is the power of the star birth. Yumani, you get a couple of your pieces along the way and you can cherry pick the next two. Powered up the Pikachu as well. Otavio is already in a corner. I mean, the only thing Daichi could even realistically want here is the VMAX for the Pikachu. You've got the energy on the Pikachu ready to attack. You've got the Jolteon with the memory capsule established. You've got your Arceus in the active attacking. It's and you started two prizes up, so you've only got three remaining left to take. I mean, if you're Otavio, there's no real need to concede early because we've got so much time left. You know, we've got these 75-minute top eight games, so you might as well play it out a little bit longer. You might gleam some information about your opponent's deck. You might even just realize an avenue of play you hadn't thought about before if you play, but I think at this stage, I mean, this was going to be rough. But then you combine it with the double prize loss and you combine it with Daichi's ridiculous start. And I really don't think there's much going on. We do have energy on the Palkia, but we didn't even have a pivot for the Sobble. Now we see the Professor's Research from Daichi here. And, I mean, you, you don't even really want to retreat the Arcus at this stage. You just get the easy KO. Yeah, you're pretty happy with everything, all things considered. Also finds Ultra Ball, so can evolve up into a flying Pikachu V Max or could look towards establishing another attacker if required. I think thanks to the uh, double prize penalty, he's pretty capable of just attacking with the Arceus and the Flying Pikachu V Max this game. It's pretty much all he's going to require. Daichi agrees, will evolve up into the Flying Pikachu. Otavio's done. Yeah, I mean, there, there comes a point on the one hand, yeah, let's play it out a little bit and let's try and get some more information. On the other hand, oh my goodness, I mean, even bearing in mind how good this matchup looks on paper for Daichi, who is now up one game to zero, obviously. I mean, goodness me, that star. And this is what I keep saying about these Japanese players and their list. We look at their list and there's so many things crammed into one. It doesn't look realistic. <laughs> and yet, every game, it just rolls. They have managed to find this absolutely ridiculous mixture of hey i've got these brilliant techs and these counters to every deck in the format oh and by the way it runs great too the core of a 
thick Arceus, having the Crobat and the Luminion to fall back on, having four Ultra Ball, four Quick Ball, four very usable supporter cards. It's not what you see with Inteleon engines, and having this approach instead really does allow your deck to flow in the opening turns that little bit safer, and it's really allowed some awful nasty combos to come down oh, I mean, and punish this Palkia deck. Absolutely. And one of the things we've seen this weekend is Arceus Inteleon is gone. That traditional Arceus Inteleon, which was so good for the past few months, isn't here. It's been replaced by Arceus builds like this. And honestly, I'm looking at this. Why would I want to play Arceus Inteleon? <laughs> when I'm watching this happen on the stream, I'm like, what, what Arceus Inteleon? Yeah, you can hit for key weaknesses. You can lock out the entire Inteleon engine. Even more so against the Palkia, you're stopping literally every card in their deck. And you have the, the safeguard of Starbirth, and you can power up all sorts of attackers. Just having an overstated two-prize Pokemon in general that can accelerate from the deck. I mean, it does everything for you. It's just, I am marveling at this deck. I am absolutely marveling at seeing this deck in action, seeing all the different options it's got, seeing the way it can really just checkmate opponents. And, and the thing is, and we said this, but we need to say it again, Daichi's got the same matchup in top four. The person <laughs> who plays Daichi next is going to be the winner of a Palkia mirror match. So we know for an absolute... Ooh, here oh, we go. now that's a little bit spicy. Two copies of the Jolteon in the prize cards. And a memory capsule. And a capsule, yep. That's going to make life a little bit more difficult for Daichi. I mean, until a prize is taken, that Jolteon cannot come out there. We've got a 2-2 list with two memory capsules. So, I mean, Adavio is going to need some breaks to win this set. And actually, your opponent not having access to that Jolteon, that is going to be nice. And it's really fired up some of the crowd here supporting Otavio. I think he gained a few followers just from his interview. <laughs> so enthusiastic, loves the game, excited to be here. And he's playing his heart out in this game too, trying to stay in the World Championships has a bit of a hurdle to overcome here. Is one game down, we'll have to win two on the bounce if he's going to overcome Daichi here. But so far, a little bit of help from the prize cards. Finally, there's some light here for him. There is, and if you're Daichi, do you bench the EV knowing you can't evolve it and it's at risk from something like a Greninja? Or do you wait until you draw the Jolteon, but by then it might be a little bit too late? It's a really awkward decision. Otavio there just gets the energy on the Palkia and passes over. Yeah, overall pretty happy. You do also get a Sobble. I think you take that on uh, the balance of things. Daichi does start with a double turbo energy, which is a fantastic thing for you because not only is the Arceus V start an incredible card, but also the Arceus V does come with a very handy Trinity charge attack. So certainly I would imagine Daichi here will be eyeing up an early Pikachu. If you can get that established, it's going to be very helpful for him. Yeah, that Pikachu getting the energy on is going to be big. Don't think I haven't noticed your Pikachu pin this morning, Joe. You are <laughs> repping the Pikachu, and I appreciate it. We do see the list, and there's, you saw a little bit of a longer search maybe than you were expecting, as Daichi's basically thinking, what, really, both of them? Yeah. They're both in the prizes? I mean, at least he's one game up, and at least he's able to get a strong Trinity charge off here. The flying Pikachu B only has 190 hit points. It's a little bit fragile, uh, so it's not fantastic. But it is, you know, the earlier the better for Daichi here. If you get it established early, you're forcing Otavio to have a lot, including Gust, if he's going to race it down and target it. We can also see an Ultra Ball. I believe there's also a Marnie as the last card in, in hand. So Daichi has the option to threaten extra basics, but may not even want to, honestly. It's going to throw away, I believe it's Ordinary Rod and one Lightning Energy. So there's just one Lightning remaining in the deck for him. I wonder if you'll go for another two prize Pokemon here instead. The awkward thing is if you do put down another Eevee, you give Otavio an easier time if he does get to use Radiant Greninja. You can set up 90 damage onto the flying Pikachu and take out the Eevee all in one turn. It's a lot of combo potential, but Daichi is still going to threaten the Eevee ASAP and hopes that the Marnie can slow down Otavio from having a monstrous turn two. Yeah, I, I think the plan here very simply is, look, I'm going to get my Pikachu nice and early. I think I can take early prizes, and I've got to hope that I draw the Jolteon. I don't know if I'm going to, as we see the Marnie hit the board, but I, I've got to believe that's going to be the case. And actually, that maybe, you know, if I've got the Eevee, maybe that means that the Pikachu lasts a turn longer because my opponent's trying to go after other things, although, like you said, it's probably going to be both in one, but it's still... I think you've got to have the Eevee down because you need to be able to pull that Jolteon. And we know, you know, assuming the prizes are taken in the usual order, those bottom two prizes are the Jolteon. So it's not going to be off the board for long. 
Daichi, I believe, discarded one of his Lightning Energy in his opening Ultra Ball. Yes. So that means that he's really limited to just one Flying Pikachu. And thanks to how few basic energy he plays, he's going to have a pretty reserved Trinity Charge. Uh, instead, is going to go for all three energy here out of the deck. One to his active Arceus and two to the bench Flying Pikachu. V here, hoping that Otavio cannot target that one Flying Pikachu. Yeah, I think that's got to be the play here. I mean, if you're, if you're Otavio, you've got to go after that Flying Pikachu. If there's no Jolteon on the board and you can take out that only Flying Pikachu, I mean, I don't know how familiar Otavio is with the list, but you've got to think they're not playing that much Lightning Energy. So with one on the Pikachu, one in the discard, you know they're playing Darkness, you know they're playing Fighting. So you know there can't be that much Lightning Energy on the board. So if there's a way to actually take out that Flying Pikachu on the bench here, combined with those prize Jolteon, that's how Otavio wins this game. Because actually, if there's no Flying Pikachu and there's no Jolteon, you're just kind of facing down a bog standard Arceus list, <laughs> and then you've got a really good chance. Otavio's hand is very strong. He has a capacious buff uh, bucket, he has the Irida, he even has Evolution Incense. I think it's very difficult for him to use a um, cross switcher combo here without the help of a uh, Radiant Greninja. So that might be something he eyes up. I think the Radiant Greninja player is already on his radar because it's so important to try and take out the EV before it comes a Jolteon. We, of course, know Jolteon is in the prize cards. Otavio is playing without that information right now. Yeah, if you know Jolteon's in the prize cards, you have to laser focus in on that flying Pikachu. If you don't know Jolteon's in the prize cards, then there's not a huge amount to tell you it would be, so you probably want to go after the Eevee, which we know is the wrong choice, but with the information that Tavio's got, it's probably the right choice. And the thing is, Daichi hasn't had a turn to evolve the Eevee. Next turn, Otavio's going to realize that those Jolteon are prized, because there's no way Daichi isn't honing in on that Jolteon. <laughs> right now, it's still a secret. Choice Belt is one of the options for Otavio here. Trying to increase his damage output, maybe giving him an easier route to deal with one of these two prize attacking threats. Let's see how the Greninja treats him here. Two big cards from concealed cards with that Rain Greninja. Discarding an energy, drawing two cards. Does find the V-Star, that's a little bit helpful. Melanie there it looks like. Has the Evolution Incense for an additional shady deal also. Will be turn attaching to the active Pokemon, so it's going to be attach and choice belt or incense for a shady deal here, in addition to everything else. Absolutely, Melanie, of course, can't be played because we've already seen the Irida, but it's there for next turn, which is potentially useful next turn. Right now, I mean, cross switcher would be good, but can you even get out the active if you play a cross switcher? Uh, cross switcher's not on the cards. I think he's played a supporter. He's done all of his deals. I think it's going to be level ball for Zigzagoon here. I think that's what's required to get a knockout on the active. Yeah, it's currently hitting 210. Oh, actually, with two bench Pokemon, he can simply use the Sobble. Yes. The 20 additional will get him over the line here. Yeah, so now we're hitting 230 with a choice bout, so that will be enough. We don't need that Galarian Zigzagoon. And Sobble, of course, way better because you can then evolve it into a Drizzle next turn. So not dealing with either of the things you want to deal with, ideally, but you're still taking energy off the board. You're still taking two prizes. Otavio goes up by two prizes, and there's no Jolteon on the board, and you're not starting the game with a double prize loss, which is always a good <laughs> bonus. <laughs> yeah, certainly a bonus. We are going to see the Flying Pikachu evolve up. Also a Darkness Energy. Daichi is also going to continue with a Quick Ball, removing a Luminion V. Find an additional basic here. I imagine you have to look for an Arceus V here. It's actually going to be the Hisuian Decidui. Maybe an indicator that he's thinning his deck for a Professor's Research play here, possibly. So I feel like it's got to be far less valuable than an Arceus. You've got to think so. I mean, it's not... I mean, is there any... And what fighting energy have we got? I think one might have gone already. I could be wrong about that. It might it's have been the previous the game. Play, uh, yeah, it's exactly what we were expecting. Going to hit the discard pile. Daichi now draws a fresh seven cards. Otavio is not to know this, but uh, there's no fear of a Jolteon play. I think part of the peak is the biggest disruption Daichi could come up with this turn, but I don't think he's been able to hit it. No. And oh, th there it is. It's a gold one. Oh, it is a gold one, like we're giving away on the code. <laughs> Get your own now. <laughs> so we do have the flying Pikachu there, which is going to take a very, very easy KO on that Palkia. And we do see Daichi is really limiting the bench. 
A second Arceus would be good, but that's an extra 20 damage for that Palkia. So instead, we just see, it looks like, oh, he's asking how many cards in yeah. hand. There's five cards in hand. Important decision for him, because does he want to bench this Arceus? He could then fall prey to Otavio, simply going Arceus, Arceus, Arceus as his two prize game plan and just win a prize race if he's able to continually gust. He's echoing Horn potentially as well. So he's taking a gamble, saying there's only four cards in Otavio's hand. It should be a little bit tricky for him to be able to target down multiple Arceus over multiple turns. Yeah, and picks up the Jolteons from the prize cards. That is huge. It means eventually he'll be able to establish his lock. It, it means basically otavio has got one turn to, to do what they need to do. And after this turn, things are getting a lot more difficult. <laughs> We're going to need a V-Star Power or a Melanie in order to get something rolling here. But we do know the Melanie is in hand. No, it was in hand, but then we... S no, it is still in hand. We've been marnied, right? There was a Professor's Research oh, last right. turn to get rid of the... So we do have the Melanie in hand to try and get some energy, which is lovely. I mean, Drizzle Active could be telling us the cross switch are coming, but then we could easily just see some dancing frogs with scoop up there. <laughs> <laughs> I think for Otavio, just winning a race, it makes sense to chase Arceus, but... The concern then becomes you only have shady deals for this turn, so you can you can quite easily get there, but then the following turn it's difficult for you even just to piece together two pieces of a combo, just one Echoing Horn, one Boss's Orders. That's really tricky when you don't have access to your Inteleon line. You see when Heavy Ball is simply going to be played for no target here, it will hit the discard pile, but we'll see how much value Otavio can accumulate. He's going to kick things off with a Melanie. He then has deals upon deals this turn only. It's a one-time thing for him, uh, by the looks of things. So I, I want a Raiding Greninja attack here. Yeah. I, I want to take out the Eevee, so you know you've got deals on board next turn. I want to bring that Flying PGV Max down to a reasonable size. And actually, if we see Radiant Greninja this turn taking out the Eevee and bringing down that Pikachu, we could see a big attack with Palkia potentially ending the game next turn. And that is Otavio's route. That is the... That is the list. Yeah, don't forget that the Flying Pikachu currently immune from oh, taking Oh, it damage. is immune from the basic. You're right. Yeah, you the needed Max to, Balloon. You needed to do that before you evolved up. It has used Max Balloon. So you can't... I still want to take out that Eevee. Yeah. But it's then going to be a slightly more awkward route. But then you're leaving a one prize Pokemon in the active. You're making the map more active. You're uh, more awkward. You're taking out that Eevee. And I, I think 310 HP... It's so hard to get. I don't think Palkia can get that high. It's not no. realistic. We do see some shady deals, though. I imagine we could see some uh, cross-switcher action this turn. I think it's certainly going to be grabbing a scoop-up net as one of these choices. And it's going to be a training court so that he can get some activations with concealed cards here. He still has a ton of abilities. Otavio will be seeing a lot of cards on this turn and can continue to use shady dealings. So we'll be piecing together a very strong turn here. He's well into this game right now. He's actually representing a pretty strong board state. We'll be able to bounce the path to the peak with the training court just found. Can conceal for two additionals here. Yeah, and if you do want to use that V-Star power, that is very important to bump the path to the peak, but we have seen that here. I mean, even if you can injure, even if you just put the 90 on the Arcus, it at least brings that down to a much more manageable KO in the future, although it does make your prize map awkward because that still wouldn't actually give you the win. Do have the Evolution Incense. I can guarantee, well, we are going to see the Scoop Up Net first, and this is where we'll see Otavio's choice. Could proactively attack with a Palkia this turn use your V-Star power to power up the uh, Radiant Greninja on the bench and force Daichi to chase it in a way, or even put some energy onto some Drizzle and you can end up finishing the Flying Pikachu off with a one-prizer like the Aqua Bullet Inteleon. That's one way that he can make the prize map more difficult for Daichi. Yeah, that would be a nice way to do it. I mean, certainly you don't want to be using too many Palkia for the rest of the game. You've, you've basically got one Palkia V-Star that you can attack with. It's going to go down to the Flying Pikachu, and then you need to be finishing the game off with single prize Pokemon and not, not even really benching another one. It's, it's kind of like this Palkia or bust at this stage. We do have the V-Star, though, which is lovely. I suppose if you're going down to one prize, you could bench a Palkia, but you really need to be powering up your other attackers here. And seeing as though Otavio's started to cherry pick some cross switches, you've got to think that's in his line of thought. He still has the option. Here we are. We're going to see the double cross switcher bring up yeah. the Arceus. Seeing as though you are going to knock out the Eevee anyway, in comes the Radiant Greninja. I believe, yeah, there's even a turn attachment possible. 
for Otavio here. There's plenty of water energy in the discard pile. And we will see the V-Star Power Star Portal powering up the Radiant Greninja all in one turn. And it is going to be able to Moonlight Shuriken, taking out the Eevee, denying Daichi from this disruptive route that he has within his deck, and also peppering up this Pikachu very nicely. Yeah, that one is not bad at all. We did see the damage on the Pikachu in the end. We did see the KO on the EV, and that was lovely. And now that Pikachu is very much in range of that Palkia, so this is really nice. Getting that Pikachu to the bench, removing that immunity that it previously had, and this is just... It's going very... This is about as... You know, if game one was as well as it could have gone for Daichi, this is as well as it could have gone right. for Octavio. This is fantastic. I think it might be a big Ultra Ball Crobat dig for Daichi here. I believe we've already seen the discard of his uh, Luminion. And I think Daichi needs to find a way of moving his Arceus out the way. He's going to find an Eevee here, try and re-establish this potential lock. Tavio can't really afford to uh, go after it anymore. So it could be coming down a little bit later. Not really sure what supporter option Daichi has in hand. He needs to find a double turbo if he is going to move out the active. Ideally, he can try and use this at the same time as gusting up the one Palkia that's in play. Oh, he has no supporter cards, I don't think. Oh, but he does still have his star buff available to him because he's only powered up the energy via Trinity Charge. So yeah, uh, I was expecting the V-Star power to have been flipped much earlier, but you very often see it on that turn too. We've actually got a late star buff. So Daichi, in a pretty reasonable spot, he can find a means of moving this Arceus already has the boss's orders in hand. I feel like that's got to be his strongest route here. Oh, yeah, you've got to. You've got to take out. If you don't take out the Palkia, Octavia wins on the next turn on a gust. So you've got to have the... You've got to have the Star Buff. You've got to go after the Palkia. And then you've got to hope your opponent doesn't have a, a good response. That Inteleon is not a great response. But... It's Still, yeah, I feel like boss's orders path to the peak is the best way to slow down Otavio here. Um because he's already grabbed the switch as one of his cards. That's a, a guarantee. The alternative, possibly, is you go for a switch and an energy card to attach to Arceus. You actually have Training Court, so you already have a guaranteed attachment. Uh, has already got the Eevee from Ultra Ball. I feel like either a supporter for the following turn. Yeah, Marnie for the following turn seems good. So you can boss his orders this turn, try and Marnie and Jolteon <laughs> on the next one to really lock down Otavio from the game. Yeah, Makes that, a lot of sense to me. That would be the way I'd be going with it. That sounds eminently sensible to me. So we do have both those Jolteon in hand, but unfortunately there's no Eevee down yet. We do see Daichi taking advantage of that training court, getting a basic energy back into hand. Now we've got the switch into the flying Pikachu, and now we just wait for the boss's orders, there which is. is there onto the Palkia. And this is making things a lot more difficult for Otavio here. It's... It's going to be awkward. We do see an attachment onto the Arceus as well. And we see the Eevee being benched. So this kind of puts Tavio on one turn where everything's going to be kind of all right. But you've got to make something work. We even see the Pumpkaboo really like bounce in the training yeah. court. Yeah, I really like this. Uh, you may as well try and deny the Radiant Greninja some free draws. Try and make Otavio actually pay the card to be able to draw additional here. Very strong play from Daichi, really good sequencing as well. Took his time there, had access to Starbirth and a lot of options, but I think he picked the best of them. Yeah, I think that was, again, that was just an absolutely masterfully played turn. One of the things we do need to remember now is with Otavio not actually having any Palkia on the bench, Daichi can fill up his bench. It doesn't really matter anymore. He's not being punished for doing so. All in all, I think this is going very, very well. It's kind of going well for both players here, but I do worry about Otavio here just not actually having a good attacker. So, I mean, sure, you attack with the Inteleon, but you're not getting a KO. And next turn is where it starts going really badly again. Yeah, these VMAXs just have far too many hit points sometimes. This Flying Pikachu is no exception. The 310 base, even by going down 90 hit points, is still way out of range of any of these one prize Pokemon on Otavio's field. And we are going to see two cards from the Radiant Greninja. Tavio picks up the Echoing Horn. Don't think that's too much help for him, unless he's going to go for a trapping play. There is a line where you try and attack into uh, the EV this turn for a one prize KO, and you put an extra 20 onto the Flying Pikachu once again with Aqua Bullet. 
possibly one of his better lines. We are going to see an echoing horn from Otavio. It's as much as to get it out of his hand as anything else. Although that Luminian is pretty weak. It is vulnerable. I'm not sure if we're able to get there. Are we ever able to get here with Choice Belt and Zigzagoon pings? Well, onto the onto the Luminion. Onto the Luminion for a few extra pings of damage. I mean, ye, potentially. I mean, Luminion's got 170, so you'd need the Choice Belt, you would need Zigzagoon, and you would need the one scoop up there. It is in the realms of possibility. I'm not sure if it's the right move, but I think, again, Otavio finds a good target to put into play for Daichi, and at the same time, it's a card you don't want to draw back into. We are seeing a search of double uh, shady deals here, the big Inteleon. I wonder what's going to be cherry-picked. Tavio does have the option to Roxanne if he really wishes to as well. He knows that Daichi did play a couple cards after the star birth, but not guaranteed to have been the boss's orders and the switch cards specifically. No, so it's, it is interesting to see how this is all going to shake out. I mean, I, I see, like, there is a route where you take out the Luminion and then potentially take out an Eevee. My worry becomes... No. No, it Tavio doesn't. can't get there. I think he's just out of energy cards. I think he's not got enough energy. He's not got enough attackers. Either way, it looks like Daichi takes a 2-0 victory and becomes the first player to move into top four of the Pokemon TCG World Championships. And we've been saying how often uh, that Daichi has such a great matchup to the Palkia V-Star. I think that second game was an indication that when things don't go flawlessly, he can stumble and uh, the Palkia players can make a game of it. He was still able to win 2-0 there. Looks convincing on paper, but that second game is an indication that there are still some things that he has to navigate, so he has to play very well, which he was able to do. But he has secured his place into top four, where he will certainly face another Origin Form Palkia V-Star. Oh, he's going to be loving that. And it is important to know, when we say it's a great matchup, it's still a great matchup. Great matchup doesn't mean guaranteed win, it doesn't mean unlosable, it means great matchup. I mean, having those two Jolteon prized was certainly a little bit of an issue, but Otavio Blair played just really, really well. And it was it was getting awkward in that last turn. You were thinking, all right, have they got enough attackers? Is, is there enough energy? And the answer was unfortunately no. There did seem to be some ways to work the prize map, but that flying Pikachu having 310 HP, even after pinging it for 90 with Radiant Greninja, it still wasn't enough. Yeah, I think what we had to have seen was the Radiant Greninja plus also putting another Palkia down so there wasn't just an easy gust to play uh, for Otavio. So he wasn't able to quite piece out everything that he required to have the winning board state, but he still played exceptionally well. I'm still going to remember his interview for a long time. <laughs> what an amazing competitor that we had to make it to the top eight. Uh, awesome to see. And again, he brought things close there in that second game. Yeah, and then let's be clear, you know, top eight of Worlds is a huge achievement, a phenomenal achievement. And at the end of the day, that was a very, very, very rough matchup. We've all been there. If you've been playing the Pokemon trading card game for long enough, you will remember those games that you've played where you just weren't supposed to win. And sometimes you manage to bring out that win and you find some tricks. But sometimes, unfortunately, it's just, it's not your game, it's not your year. But still, a top eight finish at the World Championships, especially after losing the winning in previously, that, is, that has got to feel good. Oh, it absolutely does. Daichi, his deck is looking terrifying, to be honest with you. I think any Palkia player is really scared right now as he moves his way through the bracket. He is demolishing them. I think at this point, you really have to be saying that these Arceus decks are going to be flying through this top eight today. Yeah, and I really want to know, like, what's, what's the difference here, kind of, between your Champions League and your World Championships? Because, you know, we've seen our international championships, and we know our international champions, people who are able to win those giant events, are a little bit calmer and a little bit cooler at the World Championships. They've kind of been there and done that. But these Champions Leagues over in Japan, they're even bigger. And having won two of them,